Hi everyone. In this video, we're gonna dive into the new ability to change the source of authority for users from Active Directory to Entra ID. Now, I recently did a video on the ability to change the source of authority for groups. And this is really the next phase of that as organizations really are shifting where their identity source of truth is from that on-prem active directory to the cloud-based Entra ID. And this is appealing to customers because, well, honestly, most services and resources are now cloud-based. You get cloud-based authentication protocols like OpenID Connect, OAuth, SAML, and I get all of the capabilities of the cloud around governance and security and lifecycle management and much, much more. And there's a lot less reliance on things like Kerberos. Now, if we think about most organizations today, even if we start to shift where the services are, if we think of our users, so we have our Active Directory, Domain Services, I'm just going to write AD. And this is where most of our users originate. They were created or are created in Active Directory. And then what we then have is our Entra ID tenant, This is our Entra ID. And what we do is we synchronize those users up. So there's various technologies, but for example, we use things like the, there's, there's really two. So there's Entra Connect Sync, which is the original. There's also now an Entra Cloud Sync, and it really shifts where the engine lives. So with Entra Connect Sync, the engine lives on-prem. With Entra Cloud Sync, the engine lives in the cloud. And we just get this very lightweight component running on the domain controllers. And notice the flow, the direction that this synchronization is. And what this will do is, well, now this user, Barry, we'll call them, also has their object up here in Entra ID. But the reality is the Entra ID user, that object, has a very limited ability to be edited in Entra ID because there are certain attributes on this object that tell it, well, the source of authority for that object, so the source of authority is down here, it's Active Directory. There's a couple of different attributes. The main one is there's this attribute called is cloud managed i.e. it originates in the cloud, it's source authority is the cloud. And that's going to be set to false. Uh, there's also an attribute uh, on-premises sync enabled, which would be set to true. And so any changes we want to make have to be made in Active Directory and then synchronize those up to the cloud. We see this. If I jump over for a second to the portal, if I look at good old Barry Allen, well, it tells us firstly, that yes, the on-premises synchronization is turned on for this user. And then if I actually go and try and edit Barry, it's all grayed out. I, I can't change things. It's all grayed because the source of authority for this user is based in Active Directory. And we can even see that if I go to graph and I run this query, I'm asking it for, hey, is it cloud managed? What we see the answer is false because it's not, it's, it's not managed in the cloud. It's being managed from that active directory. So we have a super limited ability to edit those objects. We have a super limited ability to take advantage of things like lifecycle management capabilities in the cloud. If we have a HR system, so imagine I have a, a cloud based HR that is actually the source of truth for our employees, well, for it to populate, what it actually has to do is go and send the information to Active Directory, which then synchronizes up into Entra ID. Now, if our company is now at the state that honestly, most of the, or maybe all of the user accounts are really interacting with cloud resources. Maybe there's a few limited AD-based capabilities down there, then shifting the user's source of authority to the cloud becomes super appealing. I don't want the user maybe in Active Directory at all. 
And I get things now like the life cycle management capabilities. I get the entry governance capabilities. My HR could now provision directly to entry ID. And if we think about zero trust and security, well, if I'm not really using this object down here anymore, why do I want the potential attack surface of it? I want the minimum possible surface. So if I am not using really this Active Directory account, maybe I just get rid of it. One important thing to understand though, is when we go ahead and we're gonna make this change, one thing that we do not get, there is no user write back today at time of recording. So this flow is that way, there is no flow today this way. So if I do choose to make this change and I start changing the attributes, whatever, those changes will not go and reflect in this user. They basically become completely cut off from one another. Now there are a few prerequisites to flip a user. They are fully documented and I'll link in the documentation to go and go through those. But there would be things like, hey, the HR system would need to start directly provisioning to enter ID. If you have certain automations uh, that go and bulk change things, maybe move the users, if you are keeping them in AD, to a different OU, so you don't start making these real changes. And uh, the mailboxes in the cloud, well, you can't have Exchange hybrid mode. I need to have moved all the mailboxes into the Exchange online. And if you are keeping, let's, let's take this scenario, if you are keeping Kerberos-based resources, so imagine it's a, a file share. So I have some Kerberos resource. It doesn't mean I can't access it anymore. What's gonna happen is my user, Barry, they have to have password-less authentication for this, what I'm about to show you to work. So hello for business, uh, FIDO2, certificate-based auth, pass keys. And what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna set up a cloud trust. So that's gonna be established as part of, you might, you're doing this already if you're doing Hello for Business. When I set up a, a cloud trust, a cloud Kerberos trust, Entra becomes a pseudo read-only domain controller object in your Active Directory, it actually gets its own object. So now what can happen is when I go and, again, it has to be a passwordless authentication. So I do that passwordless auth as normal. I'm on a intra joined or hybrid joined device. It creates a primary refresh token for me. And it gives me this primary refresh token. But because I've configured this Cloud Kerberos Trust, it also includes a partial ticket granting ticket. Now, if you don't know about Active Directory and Kerberos, not a big deal. The ticket granting ticket is the thing that lets me go to domain controllers and say, hey, I need a service ticket to talk to this resource. So then what happens is I give this partial ticket granting ticket to a domain controller, it gives me a full ticket granting ticket. I can then use that ticket granting ticket to get a service ticket for those resources. And now I give this service ticket and I'm now accessing that resource. So a key point here is even if I move the source of authority into Entra, doesn't mean I lose access to Kerberos type resources. As long as I've established this cloud Kerberos trust, and I'm using passwordless auth, I'm still gonna actually be able to go and interact with them. Another thing, you should move the group source of authority first before doing the users. And the change itself is super, super simple. We're literally gonna go in and change the attribute that I just talked about to true. And then what happens is both connect and cloud sync, if it sees the is cloud managed is true, it will block the synchronization. It was no longer going to try and synchronize in that direction. Now, if you have a custom solution based on things like Microsoft Identity Manager, MIM, you need to make sure you add exclusions so you are not trying 
uh, to actually go and synchronize those things. Now, I do have to give consent for the user on-premises sync behavior uh, to make these changes. So I've already gone ahead and consented to that. And I just follow the steps that are outlined in the documentation. And again, that's linked in the video description. But if we go through it super quickly, so we've already seen Barry right now is cloud managed. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I just want to change it. And so I'm gonna change the get to a patch because a patch is I'm just gonna update a specific attribute of it. I'm gonna take out this select bit over here. And then I just need to put in the actual patch statement, which is literally telling it, hey, it's cloud managed is now going to be true. So in the request body, I'm just changing it from false to true. And if I run it, it's green. There was no content, 204, done. And so now if I go back again, and let's do the get on this. I'm gonna take out the body. So now we see the is cloud managed is true. Now what should also happen now at this point is if I go back over to Barry, let's just refresh to be on the safe side. If I now do my, well, actually, let's go back for a second to all users. So firstly, Barry now shows as no, it is not on-premise synced. So that has been broken. But additionally now, edit properties, they're not gray anymore because it is now the source of authority has been changed. That's the key thing we have done now. So, and again, just to be super, super clear, I'm doing this one at a time in the portal. You would write a script to do this at a larger scale. So what we have now done is this is now true. For the user we've moved, the source of authority, is now up here. But the key point also is this user will not sync anymore from AD. The changes will not sync. But also remember, there is no write back. So it is not gonna go and update them there either. I should also be able to go and look in the logs. So if we jump down, look at our monitoring and our audit logs. And if I change the activity, to change the source of authority, there I can see it. So I can see, I just did this, there is my change of the source of authority. So you can always go back and actually track these. So at this point, you have changed the source of authority. You now have a choice to make. So the choices could be, well, I don't need this anymore. I do not need the user. And that's probably gonna be the case in most scenarios. So maybe now, I would disable it first, make sure you don't just delete straight away, disable first, make sure things are okay, but then you go and delete it. Alternatively, as kind of a bonus scenario, you keep it because you're doing this scenario because you're gonna use the password list, auth, pass keys, um, certificate-based auth, authenticator app, uh, Fido2, hello for business. So I can still access both on-premises resources that use Kerberos because I've configured that cloud Kerberos trust. Also, I could access things like Azure files, Azure virtual desktop, any web app that uses at proxy. If I'm using entry private access that uses Kerberos behind the scenes, RDB, SMB file shares, web apps that use Kerberos. I just need to ensure that any hybrid join device is using password lists, I'll be able to use those things. But remember, 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 there is no write back. 
that sync is not going to do anything anymore. Changes I make here will not get reflected. I would now do things like ensuring HR now provisions directly into Entra ID if it previously talked to Active Directory. The docs are great. I do recommend you go through them. Um, again, they're linked in the description below. It's a super simple change, but there are pretty massive implications. So take your time to understand, to plan this out, to test it. Um, but, but that is it. I mean, it really is, as most organizations are shifting where their identity, true source of truth is, it's not AD anymore, it is Entra. And I wanna take advantage of all of the fantastic capabilities. I need to start shifting that source of authority from my users, my groups um, to Entra. So now with users, uh, I can go ahead and do this. So as I hope this was useful. Till next video, take care.